Okay, I think we're recording. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, Nick White here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube, so check the description. I'll have everything that you need to know. Uh, right now, I am doing a uh, leak code series where I just explain all the problems while I do them because I'm, you know, I'm doing them myself studying. Um, right now we're doing, uh, this question's called number of islands and I was doing it in the explore page on leak code. Really cool. Um, this is really common. I was actually asked this in a Twilio interview, which is, I literally recorded not an interview, but uh, the hacker ranks and I have that on my page if you want to check that out, but, uh, I don't, I didn't solve it. So, uh, here we go. This is what the question is. Basically, it wants to know how many islands are in this grid. We're given a grid of chars, so a char grid, right? And the characters are 1 or 0. And we want to find the number of islands. And an island is a string of 1s connected horizontally or vertically, right? So this is one island because all of these 1s are connected horizontally and vertically. But, you know, this is its own island, and this is a separate island because these are diagonally to each other, and they're not connected horizontally or vertically. And then this is its own island, too. That's why there's three islands here, because these are horizontally connected. This is its own little island, and then these are this is its own little island, because it's just the vertical and horizontal connections, like I said one more time, right? Uh, diagonal doesn't count. So it says, yeah. Uh, an island is uh, surrounded by water, one is land, zero is water, and formed by connecting adjacent lands horizontally and vertically. You may assume all four of the grid are surrounded by water. Find the number of islands, right? Um, so this was a little confusing at first for me, but, uh, you know, it makes sense. Uh, you basically want to use breadth-first search to figure this out. And um, what we do is we, we have our initial count is equal to zero, right? So this is going to be what we return, the number of islands. And we loop through. This is a 2D grid. So we have, you know, each, uh, each element is a row of it, of chars. And uh, so first thing we want to do is we want to do int i is zero. i is less than grid.length to get into each row of the... Uh, the 2d array and then we're going to want to do int j equals zero and uh, j is less than grid of i dot length to get the columns right um you know just that's just how you loop through a 2d ma like array or matrices or whatever matrix or whatever uh just through the rows so we can get the row by index and then we go through uh each actual element so this now we're going through each element and what we want to do is if we see a one as we go through, then we want to, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to see a one and then we're gonna to wanna, to, um, you know, find the whole island structure of that one. So we do a breadth first search and we turn every single one that we see into a zero. So we, we go horizontally and vertically through all connected ones. So we go through the whole island once we see it and we turn all the ones into zeros so that it's like, and we increment the counter by one. So it's like, we see the island, we see a one, we explore all the other ones, we turn everything to a zero. So in this case, everything would be a zero and the island count would be one. And then we didn't see any other ones. So there we go. That's what we would return. In this one, we would, re we would turn all of, we'd see this one right away. We'd find all the ones connected to it horizontally or vertically, turn them all to zeros. So these would all be zeros now. And then we would keep going. So the counter would be one. We would keep going. And then eventually we would see this new one. We'd check for, you know, horizontally and vertically uh, adjacent z uh, ones to find the rest of that island. In this case, there's only one one. So we explore everything. It's easy. It's just one element. So we add one to it. Now it's two. The counter's two. And then finally we get to the last row and we see these two. And that's pretty much it. So, um... Yeah, let's implement the rest of this really quick. So into i j is equal to one. So if we see a one as we go through, then we'll do uh, call BFS. You can call it whatever you want. This is the method. We pass in our grid. We pass in the position we saw the one at in the using the i and j. And also we want to increment counter because once we see a one, we know that we're we found at least one island. And then at the end of this whole loop, we're going to return count, which is going to have the number of islands. But all we have to do now is implement this um, BFS method. So public void call BFS. And this can be implemented a few different ways, but um, 
you know, I like to do it the way that I'm going to do it right here. Uh, int i, so you're taking what we passed in, right? The position and the grid. So first thing what I like to do is I like to do the boundary checks right away. So some people like to do this differently. You can use math. You can do it a few different ways to do these boundary checks, but uh, I just like to do it right away. So if i is less than zero or i is greater than or equal to grid.length or j is less than zero or uh, j is greater than or equal to, this is the trickier part. You just have to make sure you do grid of i.length because you know we have to check the, uh, the number of elements in each row. And then, uh, or if we made a mistake somehow, or, you know, we're going to be doing recursion, so we do have to do this check. Or if grid of i of j is equal to 0 and not equal to 1 like we would have wanted, then we do return. And this is basically going to break us out of the method uh, when we do the recursion. Otherwise, literally all we have to do um, in this method is set, like I said, we're setting the element. So we see a 1, we call this. And then we do this boundary check to just make sure we're not going out of bounds and stuff. So we see a 1, we call this, and then we turn that 1. So this would be the position that we see the 1. We pass in the position in the grid. We set the 1 to a 0. So the first thing we would do, we would see this 1. We'd set it right to a 0. Then we do the recursive calls, um, passing in grid i j uh, four times now. And since this is the only, it's not, that's going to fail, I accidentally hit submit, but since uh, all we have to do is check the up, um, down, uh, left, and right positions, because the islands are vertically and horizontally adjacent, uh, we just want to do, so i plus 1, because the i is the row number, uh, i minus 1, and then we want to do left and right, so j minus 1 and j plus one and that should be it that should be it that's how that's all you have to do is recursively do a call um and make sure that you have the syntax right and type everything right that was a semicolon instead of an or but um yeah it should actually work yeah so success it works uh, maybe i'll go through it one more time really quick before i end this video um so yeah it works uh you want the we want the number of islands in a 2D grid. You do the double for loop, so you're going each position at a time. Once you see a 1, we explore all the 1s in one single island. We increment the counter each time we see an island, and we turn all of the 1s in that island to a 0 so that we can't see them again. It's going to fix everything. You do the boundary check right at the beginning. There's a few ways to do the boundary check. Maybe look up other implementations of it. You set the current element to 0, and then you do the recursive calls on the, L the row before, the row after, so the up. The position above, the position below, and the position to the left, and the position to the right using the i and j index indexes. So um, yeah, this is the first medium problem we did on the channel. Maybe it's not even considered a medium problem, really. I'll give it a thumbs up. Um, but um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, there's probably more complicated versions of this, I think, and uh, we'll be doing those in the future. So. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think. Um, maybe I can explain these better in the future. But thank you for watching and appreciate it. See you in a bit.